Hey guys, welcome back to Andy's Dinosaur Reviews, and today we are back with yet another brand new Mattel Jurassic Park 93 Classic 30th Anniversary release, and this time we've got ourselves the Dr. Ian Malcolm Glider Escape Pack. This is similar to the one that we had seen recently that I had reviewed with the Alan Grant figure, except now again we have Ian, instead of Alan, we have a different gimmick going on as we have a glider, obviously. And this time, the set, rather than coming with a Gallimimus and Velociraptor, we've got ourselves a Dilophosaurus and a baby Triceratops. As you can see, the packaging, the box art is absolutely fantastic, just like it was with the Alan Grant set. This is, again, nostalgia through the roof, and just having that JP logo up there, man, that just, like, brings back so many memories. I honestly am just aching for Mattel to release more of this stuff and I'm terrified that they're not going to but you can see again the Jurassic Park logo right here the name of the set and everything and then of course the really cool image there of the set here on the side you've got the Jurassic Park logo and the sunset and you're gonna have the same thing over here again but on the back, you can see we have a really cool image of the set kind of in action, basically showing off a little dino toy or Jurassic Park toy photography right there. And then you've got images of what's included. And on top of that, you can see images down here of the other items that are included in the 30th Anniversary 93 Classic line, all of which we've reviewed now once we get this one done, except for the Scutosaurus set. And that one is coming up very, very soon. Well, we'll just put it that way. But uh, really hyped about this. Again, I loved each set so far. The Red Rex was amazing. The Alan Grant set was amazing. This is, I'm sure, going to be amazing also. So let's pop it open and check it out. So here we have everything now out of the packaging and standing here before us. And man, I honestly think Mattel deserves like a round of applause for this line. Like it just gets better and better with each and every set that I acquire and open up here on my channel like this is fantastic and I definitely like this even more than I liked the previous set the Gallimimus set because everything looks super cool but the Dilophosaurus is amazing looking like I love this new sculpt that they've given the Dilophosaurus which is exclusive to this set so far we do not have that Dilophosaurus in any other set that I've seen same deal for the baby Triceratops which honestly is like screaming Kenner to me as far as like a hatchling Kenner figure and then of course Ian looks awesome and we've got a ton of extras here one thing that is a little weird though that I'm noticing is my Ian is like missing his glasses and it shows him with glasses on the packaging and everything and he even has like the holes in the side of his head for the glasses but they're just not here they're non-existent in the packaging I don't know why or where they went but they absolutely were not included so uh, that's a little bit of a bummer I guess for my set so quite a bit to go over with this set and I'm already beyond excited about it so we might as well jump straight to that closer look so we can continue to get more and more hyped for this awesome 93 classic line so starting with Ian Malcolm you can see that he looks pretty good definitely has the likeness of Jeff Goldblum down pretty nicely and you can see again definitely follows along with the same trend that we've seen on previous Ian Malcolms from Mattel I think it looks really quite nice you've got really nice detailing really nice paintwork you can see the eyebrows are painted the eyes are painted and then of course Ian's hair as you move down further into the body you can see in classic typical Ian Malcolm fashion he is of course wearing all black and you can see that his shirt looks really quite nice we have a nice pocket there on the front nice kind of creasing and wrinkling through the course of the shirt pretty much as you would expect when it comes to real clothing as you move down you've got the belt right there you can see the belt buckle is painted and as we continue to move down you can see his pants as well again have all sorts of creasing and all sorts of just life to them like well of course his pants aren't alive but it makes him look more like a living human being rather than a you know action figure because they have added so much really nice detail creasing and all sorts of fine detail to his pants making him have a very realistic appearance and as we continue to move down you also have the seam as far as the boots go and that's one thing that's pretty convenient for Mattel when it comes to an Ian Malcolm figure is you don't really need to add much color to him he's usually just wearing all black and it works perfectly with this Ian as you move down you can see the same thing here for his arms and you can see that his sleeves are kind of rolled up and as you lead down you've got his arms uh, sticking out of the sleeves and you also have some gloves on Ian as well that leave the fingertips exposed from the gloves as well but everything looks really good again pretty much like classic 
Mattel human figures look like and definitely really quite nice overall. And we probably have all of the standard articulation we usually have. So you can see we've got the neck articulation for Ian. You also have arm articulation forward and back. Do they come out? Yep, they absolutely come out away from the body. Same deal for the elbow. And then, of course, both the shoulder and elbow can swivel. On top of that, you've got a midsection here that swivels. You also have hip articulation forward and back and out away from the body. You've got knee articulation, which was a little stiff. That was a little bit concerning, but very nice. As soon as you kind of like ease it in, get it moving, and you can also swivel the knee on top of everything. So pretty decent articulation for the Ian. He definitely looks really, really good. And then we've got the accessory to Ian, which this is why you see the hole in Ian's back. You can see we've got like a little area here that we would kind of push that into his back and then strap it on to Ian so that it holds on his, again, the glider. You can see the uh, wings of the glider are going to head in here. So actually, let's just go ahead and put those on quick. And there we go. We now have it assembled pretty nicely and it looks pretty cool. You can also see again that we've got a beautiful greenish tone right here that, uh, is translucent so you can kind of see through it which is pretty neat and uh, again looks pretty nice overall definitely has a very very fun old kind of old school Kenner feel to it we also have a weapon that goes with of course our Ian I don't think the dinosaurs are going to be handling this but you can see that as well looks pretty nice not really any color variation or anything to it just a grayish tone but we do have a really cool kind of green missile if you decide to attempt to murder one of the dinosaurs how we get this in here apparently there we go i'm really bad at it so you can see the green has kind of a nice translucent look to it as well similar to what we had seen on the glider for ian definitely looks really cool really quite like that and we will shoot that here in a moment and then we also have some capture gear for the dinosaurs so we've got capture gear as far as like the uh, I would imagine this goes over the head of the Dilophosaurus. We can also chain the dinosaur up. And you have a little bit more for the Triceratops as well to kind of lock the Triceratops in there, which all of that looks really neat. And then, of course, our baby Triceratops itself. And you can see the baby Triceratops looks really cool. Absolutely screams classic Kenner hatchling. Like, it really, really does. And uh, again, in typical Mattel fashion, the fine detail is incredible on this. You can see really nice, really vibrant scale detail throughout, just looking super highly detailed as my camera loses focus. We don't have much paintwork for it, but then again, you really never had much paintwork in the first place for the old Kenner versions. You can see we have kind of like a light tone here around the eye, runs under the eye, and then leads up toward the frill. The horns of the Triceratops are also painted with that same tone that we have there on the side of the face. And then we also have a nice black eye as well as a nice gloss coat on that eye that's really about it as far as the you know coloration goes for the most part you don't really see a whole lot of uh, color outside of that it looks like we do have a speckling through the figure though so it does kind of add a little extra color to it you can see that kind of showing up here in the back of the frill but Again, the actual sculpt looks great as you move through. You've got some osteoderms here, or scoots kind of running over the top, which is really cool because that's exactly what you would see on a Jurassic Park version of a Triceratops. So kudos to Mattel for picking up that little detail right there. That's exactly what you would want to see for a Triceratops. And I like that they've taken elements of the Triceratops from like, you know, what you would actually see in the films and then also at the same time sculpted this out where it kind of has that classic Kenner look and uh, kind of combine the two to give us a really neat looking version of a hatchling triceratops. You can see the legs are in slightly different positions compared to the opposing side there. You can see both legs are sort of trailing over here. We also have a really nice curve in the tail as you lead out and uh, even more nice fine detail on the underside. Again, really well done for sure is this baby triceratops. And then probably my favorite part of the entire set, we have this gorgeous Dilophosaurus and look at how beautiful this is first of all i absolutely love the colors of this and the colors of this honestly just give me such a strong kenner vibe as well like even though this isn't exactly a color scheme that we had seen on a dilophosaurus it definitely looks like the type of coloration you would have seen 
on a Kenner version. But you can see the head sculpt looks great. Really nice detail as you move through. Nice detailing up into the crest of the Dilophosaurus. And you have that nice light green there up in the top of the crest there as well as running under the eye. And it just plays off of the darker green body so nicely. You also have a lighter tone here for the lower jaw as well as a very nicely painted eye. You can see there, very nicely painted. Very nice black pupil added as well. We have an articulated jaw, of course, which opens really wide if you choose to. Nice realistic pinkish tone of color for the inside of the mouth the teeth as well are painted very nice very carefully zero sloppiness that i'm really picking up on in there and you also have a nice gloss coat the jaw works great you can see it can open and close to pretty much wherever you would like i love that even though we have a dilophosaurus finally from mattel in like a mainline sort of release even though it's kind of like an off shoot of the mainline figures but you can see we have one without a frill and I absolutely love the fact that we have a Dilophosaurus without like an obnoxious frill getting in the way or anything like that. It does include the frill. You can see it's relaxed here in the neck and throat region of the Dilophosaurus exactly as it would appear in Jurassic Park. You know, that's kind of the way it looks, but it's not, you know, sticking up, just being in the way. Super awesome on the part of Mattel to go that route. As you lead down the course of the neck, you see more really nice looking skin texture. You also see more of that light green pick up here and then stripe down through the course of the body. And then it just kind of like squiggles and sort of just goes crazy as you lead down here into the stomach region. More fantastic skin texture in the stomach. You've got some more really nicely sculpted arms and hands. Nice muscle definition in the arms. Really nice skin texture as well. You can see that the nails are sculpted, not painted unfortunately, but you do have articulation in the arms and they move really, really nicely, really smoothly. This one's a little bit stiffer than this one, but overall they both work nicely and I like that you can kind of push them there into the body into a nice natural position. We do, of course, have the fax app code here on the top of the figure if you would like to add this to your collection so that you can include the Dilophosaurus into your Jurassic fax app collection. As you lead back, you can see that the muscle definition in the thigh looks really good good muscle definition in the calf also looks really good and as you lead down you've got a foot sculpt that is of course oversized but it doesn't look too terrible not too distracting the nails look really good again no nail paint kind of has a slight shine to it but not so much we do have the dew claw and everything sculpted out as well and then as you lead out into the tail you can see more really nice skin texture you can see that that light green does end unfortunately as we lead out into the tail i think it would have looked super cool if it had led the entire way out onto the tail but it's not the end of the world the tail is in a really kind of high up positioning like it really leads up pretty far and we don't really have the ability to articulate the tail it kind of looks like we should but we don't so it stays in that upward position it has a really cool curve to it though at first i thought for a moment looking at it that maybe it would have like a wire tail and i just didn't know that that's what it was going to come with i don't know why i assumed that when looking at it but unfortunately it does not but i still think it actually looks pretty neat like the positioning of the tail the curve of the tail definitely looks cool and also could probably you know, create some pretty neat looking poses for the Dilophosaurus if you do some like dino toy photography. But you can see everything looks pretty much the same on this side as you move through, except the leg is kind of leading on this side compared to it trailing on the opposing side. But man, I absolutely love this Dilophosaurus. This is definitely one of my favorite Mattel Dilophosaurus that has ever been created. One thing that I kind of failed to mention a moment ago when we were looking at it, I completely passed over it, is the articulation in the legs. And although they do articulate, they are actually really stiff. I would think if I continue to move them, they'll wear in. But you can see they're actually pretty difficult, like really quite difficult to move. Way more difficult than you usually see on a Mattel Dilophosaurus, and I feel like the balance isn't so great. I don't know if the foot is warped or what, but I'm having a hard time getting him to stand. He's kind of standing right now, but then he falls over. But we don't really need to worry about a size on Ian, because of course he's going to fall right there in the same size range as all of the previous human figures, or the previous Ians, as we have had quite a few. But as far as the size goes on the baby Triceratops, you were looking at... Well, we'll never know because I lost the tape measure. About two and three quarter inches or around seven centimeters in length and height wise about one and a half inches or just shy of about four centimeters or maybe a little over three and a half. And then for the Dilophosaurus, which is surprisingly small, if I can get him to stand long enough to get a length 
from the tail to the snout, you're looking at a little over four and a quarter inches or around 11 centimeters. Of course, it would be a bit longer if the tail were actually extended, but it's held up pretty high, kind of making the length of the dinosaur a bit shorter and height wise about three and a quarter inches or a little over eight centimeters, approaching eight and a half. For a size comparison, here are our usual review comparison suspects as we have Mr. Papo T-Rex, the Attack Pack Colovosaurus, and Robert Muldoon next to our Ian Malcolm glider set. And you can see again, the Dilophosaurus is definitely quite small. And uh, you can also see that the Ian Malcolm figure is pretty much in the size range you would expect him to be, except for the fact that he's not wearing a hat, which makes uh, Muldoon just slightly taller than him. But also the fact that the baby Triceratops would probably be right there in the size range you would expect it to be. But to further show you that, if you are familiar with the Kenner figures and the hatchling figures from Kenner specifically, you can see a comparison here between a Kenner hatchling Triceratops and a Mattel hatchling Triceratops. And obviously you can see that they aren't far off as far as the size goes. So Mattel really did a great job of kind of creating that figure in a similar size range where it fits right in with the Kenner versions. Now here's probably the most shocking part of the comparisons, and that's the fact that the Dilophosaurus is so much smaller than your average Mattel Dilophosaurus. And you can see, again, with uh, one of the previously released versions of a Dilophosaurus from Mattel on the right and the newer version here on the left, it's much, much smaller. But when it comes to kind of smaller versions of the Dilophosaurus from Mattel, we kind of have to jump back to one of the older versions of the Dilophosaurus from Mattel. Now you can see looking at these two together, if you are familiar with the older versions, the kind of attack pack style versions of the Dilophosaurus. These two fit right in with each other when it comes to his size. But of course, the newer version, in my opinion, looks so much better without the obnoxious frill in the way. Definitely just a huge improvement on the figure as a whole. But you can see if you do have one of the older Dilophosaurus, this one's pretty much right there in the same size range as the older versions. And also, we're going to fire our weapon, because why wouldn't we? As soon as I figure out where the button is, up oh, there it is to push it, we're going to see who we hit, if anybody, back there. We killed the Dilophosaurus. So that came out pretty fast, definitely had some pretty good force to it, and works well to take out your dinosaur, as we did exactly that, by shooting our unfortunate Dilophosaurus. So this brand new Mattel Jurassic Park 30th Anniversary 93 Classic Ian Malcolm Glider Escape Pack is absolutely fantastic, just like the Alan Grant set was. I love everything in here. It's just so awesome to have Jurassic Park toys on the market again, and uh, especially toys this beautiful. Like, Mattel has done such a great job with this line, really just capturing everything that we love about Jurassic Park and the Jurassic Park toys. Like, they really are just honestly making it feel like Kenner is back and Kenner's back at it when it comes to releasing the stuff that they were releasing because it really does have that feel it has that overall presentation and appearance of classic Kenner and that's one of the reasons why I love this but at the same time I am a massive fan of Mattel so you kind of have a bit of Mattel and Kenner mixed together in these releases and that's why I think I love them even more because it has a mixture of two of my favorite all-time companies. The Ian Malcolm looks great, definitely captured his likeness really well as they usually do. The sculpt is very highly detailed and very nicely painted. There's no sloppiness on Ian. You usually don't have much sloppiness when it comes to a Mattel Ian Malcolm figure or just in general Mattel figures aside from the eyes once in a while on dinosaurs. But definitely really nice precise sculpt and paintwork overall along with some pretty cool articulation. On top of that we have some fun extras like the glider and stuff for Ian which is always pretty cool to have have that stuff for him definitely a fun addition to Ian as a whole on top of that we also have a hatchling triceratops which is super super cool having those kind of throwback Kenner hatchling style figures here with this triceratops and it looks great really does look and feel like it could be like an unreleased version of a Kenner hatchling figure so Kudos to Mattel for capturing that so perfectly and creating us a really neat version of a hatchling Triceratops with a gorgeous sculpt. And we also have the Dilophosaurus, which is my favorite part of this set and definitely one of my favorite Dilophosaurus from Mattel so far. The sculpt is fantastic. I love the fact that the frill is relaxed on it. That is something I am a massive fan of when it comes to this figure. The size is also pretty nice, very nice and small like the older Dilophosaurus were, which I like the larger ones as well, but I also really think 
think that the smaller size kind of makes it fit in more so with the humans a little better. Obviously not quite to scale perfectly, but a little bit better. And on top of that, the paintwork is super cool. I love the tones of color they've chosen for it. I love the design that they've given it. Again, it just screams Kenner to me. And on top of that, you have some pretty fun articulation. So a total win as far as that Dilophosaurus goes. And you have capture gear on top of that for the dinosaurs, which is, again, about as vintage as it gets and really just tugs on my heartstrings because that screams Kenner more so than I think anything else possibly could. So as a whole, this is another fantastic Mattel release, and we are now kind of dwindling with these 93 classic figures because we only have one set left to review, which is super sad, and man, I am keeping my fingers crossed that there is more stuff coming that maybe we haven't heard of yet, we haven't seen revealed yet, because if this is the end of this line, Line, that is a travesty because Mattel is honestly doing some of their best work yet with this Jurassic Park line. So make sure if you are interested, you head to the link that I will include in the description to where you can pre-order it currently on Target's website, or you can head to Target in store and grab it because that's where most people seem to be finding it. And I want to give a huge shout out to my good friend Andres, who was awesome enough to actually pick this set up and help me acquire it a little bit earlier than I would have had I actually spent time looking for it in my area because my Target says that they have absolutely no idea when it's actually going to be coming into stock so rather than waiting he was super cool hooked me up with this set and i have the pleasure of not only reviewing it for you guys of course but adding it to my collection rather than searching for months so again a massive thank you to andres make sure you pick up this set it is 1000 percent worth it and make sure you like comment and subscribe and i will see you in the next review thanks for watching